In this video, we're going to study the war on terror. I'm going to give you a very broad overview and just kind of hit some key facts with this. So we're going to jump around a little bit. Let's start with this. The Arab world has always faulted the United States for its support of Israel. However, the roots of terrorism very goes back a long, long time. After World War I, the Ottoman Empire, the last of the Islamic empires, was replaced with Western-style secular nation-states. Religious fundamentalists decried modernization and the corruption of the House of Islam or the ideal area of the world governed by precepts of the Quran and Sharia law. The picture you see up in the top right, the man, who, the boy who's got his uh, face circled over there, that is a young Osama bin Laden. He'll be the main subject of a few things that we're going to be discussing here in a little bit. So the U.S. had invested in Middle Eastern oil. Muslims, however, feared that their traditional values were weakening and called for the U.S. to leave the Middle East. They felt that the, that their homelands would be westernized. There's a big fear of that. So the stationing of U.S. troops following the Gulf War was seen as another violation of their lands. Islamic extremists such as bin Laden and the supporters of al-Qaeda which means the base preached jihad, which they defined as a holy war against the Jews and crusaders to restore an Islamic caliphate or a realm from Africa and the Middle East through Asia. Please understand that jihad is up to interpretation. Some people interpret that to mean kind of a struggle within yourself rather than a holy war against a kind of a Christian Muslim kind of situation. Osama bin Laden was outraged when Saudi Arabia allowed American troops on Saudi soil when Iraq invaded Kuwait in the 1990s. Many Middle Eastern nations realized that they could fight Israel and the U.S. by providing terrorists with money as well. So it's kind of a twofold thing happening at the same time. So let's look at the history of terrorism in the United States. A lot of people don't know that the World Trade Center was bombed in 1993. Most people know about the September 11th, 2001, but a truck bombing in the World Trade Center killed six people in 1993. Later in 1998, the U.S. responded to terrorist bombings of two U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania by bombing al-Qaeda camps in Afghanistan and in Sudan. Their leader, bin Laden, fled to Afghanistan and then allied himself with a group called the Taliban. In 2000, two suicide bombers and a small rubber boat nearly sank a billion dollar warship called the USS Cole, which was docked in Yemen. 17 were killed and 39 were injured in that attack. And then most notably of the terrorist attacks in recent days is of course September 11th, 2001. Al-Qaeda trained several terrorists to attack the US on September 11th, four airplanes were used, two of them crashed into the World Trade Center, one into the Pentagon, and then the other one crashed in Pennsylvania. Nearly 3,000 lives were claimed and had not seen such devastation since the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. So there's the World Trade Center, there's the Pentagon, that's where you have the, the crash in Pennsylvania. Also happening around this time period, terrorists also posed a new threat when they began to use the mail to spread anthrax, a type of bacteria that can be, become lethal if left undetected. Several occurrences of anthrax were found, but no suspects were ever publicly recognized. Kind of an eerie, strange uh, time period. In the fall of 2001, Bush declared that Osama bin Laden and other al-Qaeda leaders were wanted dead or alive. When the Taliban refused to hand over bin Laden, U.S. forces added by anti-Taliban Northern Alliance quickly overthrew the Afghan government and installed Hamid Karzai as its new president. However, bin Laden was not found and was still on the run. The original purpose of invading Afghanistan, however, was to bring down the Taliban regime that had sheltered Osama bin Laden. Be thinking about that. What are the causes of this? By December 2001, the Taliban had fallen, so it was kind of kind of swift moving through there. Afghanistan still remained divided and the remnants of Al-Qaeda and the Taliban remained embedded in the mountains bordering Afghanistan and also Pakistan. So during the campaign, um, now that we're going into the campaign of uh, President Obama getting into the 2008 time period, President Obama argued that Bush had ignored Afghanistan. Not enough had been done. And so Obama approved adding 17,000 troops in 2009 and then 30,000 more in 2010. The surge in troops proved effective, but the usage of pilotless drone attacks on terrorists in Pakistan intensified the anger against the United States. And so between 2002 and 2006, the U.S. prevented at least 10 major al-Qaeda attacks, at least three on U.S. soil as well. One of the highlights of President Obama's time in office was in May of 2011 
when Osama bin Laden was killed in Pakistan by Navy SEAL Team 6. The death of bin Laden raised the question of if it's the U.S.'s role in Afghanistan was actually complete. So in 2012, Obama and President Karzai signed a long-term partnership agreement. The new focus of the U for the U.S. forces was to train and support the Afghanistan military and then to end U.S. combat missions by 2014. So now we're going to jump around just a tick. So going backwards a little bit, what became known as the Bush Doctrine, the president argued that the old policies of containment and deterrence were no longer effective in a world of stateless terrorism. So to protect America, the U.S. claimed the, the president claimed that the U.S. was justified in, in using preemptive attacks to stop the gaining and usage of weapons of mass destruction (WMDs) by terrorists and nations supporting terrorism as well. So Bush singled out three big nations: you've got Iran, Iraq, and North Korea, and he described them as being an axis of evil in the State of the Union address in 2002. So in 2002 as well, North Korea announced that it had resumed its nuclear weapons program. The Bush administration was not able to persuade North Korea to stop this and then potentially looking over at the rest of the world. The claim was that in Iraq, that Saddam Hussein, in control of Iraq, had been using chemical weapons and been hiding chemical weapons. And that's going to be one big moment for when, or one reason for why the United States will eventually want to go in and invade Iraq. And, and have a presence there as well. So U.S. intelligence found no link between Iraq, Saddam Hussein, and any plans for Iraq to aid terrorists with weapons of mass destruction. However, President Bush pursued a preemptive attack on Iraq before Hussein could build and distribute WMDs to terrorists. So Iraq accepted a U.N. plan to send U.N. inspectors to Iraq to search for WMDs. However, they didn't find any. Bush, however, continued to present claims of their existence based on intelligence that would later turn out to be false. So in early 2003, Bush declared that Iraq had not complied with the UN. Without the support of the UN, the U.S. launched opera Operation Iraqi Freedom with air attacks. So in less than four weeks, the U.S. armed forces, aided by the British and other allies, go on to capture Baghdad. And when they do this, they do not find weapons of mass destruction over in Iraq. Interesting pictures as Saddam Hussein and his regime will be toppled. Saddam himself was captured in 2003. However, the violence in Iraq still continued. Many conflicts between Sunni, Shiite um, Muslims in Iraq started to develop. Freedom fighters such as Al Qaeda also came into the country and continued to launch attacks against U.S. troops. There you have Saddam Hussein being captured. On May 1st, 2003, President Bush declared that major combat was over in Iraq. Some of the most interesting, intriguing pictures of that era as well. So the Bush administration will also get criticism for the invasion of Iraq without sufficient troops to control the country and for disbanding the Iraqi army. In particular, they also catch a lot of criticism for the Abu Ghraib um, prison scandal. Pictures of the barbaric treatment of the prisoners at the prison further diminished America's reputation in Iraq and worldwide as well. 2004, Bush is going to be re-elected and defeat John Kerry. 2005, Iraqis will hold their first elections, but the violence continued. By late 2008, the U.S. had started to turn over control of the war effort to the Iraqi government. However, still many attacks over not only in Iraq, but in Afghanistan. So by the end of 2008, the Bush administration had not successfully resolved the nuclear threats from Iran, North Korea, and had left two unresolved wars for the Obama administration to manage. However, one good thing you can say is the administration did prevent a major terrorist attack from happening. And we know that all the way from 2001. So President Obama was elected in partly because of his opposition to the Iraq war and his promise to end it. In 2009, Obama developed a plan to lower U.S. involvement in Iraq. So by the end of 2011, the last of U.S. forces had been withdrawn from Iraq. And after the U.S. left, Sunni and Al-Qaeda insurgents continued to thrive and, and kind of move, the, move in, continued to terrorize the majority Shiite government as well. So nearly 4,500 soldiers died in Iraq. About 32,000 have been wounded in action. Over 100,000 Iraqis had died as of 2011. Also in 2010, going backwards one more year, a wave of protest across the Middle East and North Africa became known as the Arab Spring. The governments in Tunisia, Libya, for example, Muammar Gaddafi, that will be killed, Egypt, 
Mubarak will be in prison, Yemen, ongoing civil wars in Syria, all are going to be happening at the same time. Obama's sympathy for pro-democracy protesters upset U.S. allies in the conservative, oil-rich Persian Gulf states. So Obama himself was criticized at home for not intervening more forcefully in failed states such as Libya and Syria as these nations are looking to rearrange their government. So that's a brief overview of the history of terrorism in America and worldwide and kind of how we've uh, managed that. If you still have questions, let me know. Hope this was super helpful. Thanks again for watching.